Hi, welcome to Problematic Women, a show that strong, showcases strong conservative women, current events, and the hypocrisy of the so-called feminist movement. I'm Brie Payton of The Federalist and friend of The Daily Signal. And I'm Kelsey Harkness, friend of The Federalist and with The Daily Signal. Today we have an exciting show. We're taking on the massive scandal of Harvey Weinstein out in the very liberal Hollywood. We're going to be talking about the Boy Scouts deciding to allow girls into its program. We're going to show an interview with one of the rare Hollywood conservative actresses and writers out there. We're going to play real or fake news. And of course, we're going to crown our problematic woman of the week. All right. So first, let's tackle this whole Weinstein scandal. How outraged should conservatives be that this big time producer was targeting and exploiting women um, that he, you know, worked with on a daily basis and promising them things in exchange for sexual favors, um, and also was a Democratic donor and just kind of the overall response from a lot of his donors like Hillary Clinton and like Barack Obama. What should the response be from the conservative movement? I think it's pretty interesting. It's a good question to ask. What should conser the conservative response be? Because let's let's face it, we've had sex scandals on the conservative side as well. Granted, this one seems bad. It seems like it ran deep. It seems like a lot of people knew about it and perhaps covered up about it. A lot of people didn't speak out. And of course, it's especially hypocritical when you have Harvey Weinstein, who is one of the top liberal donors to people like Hillary Clinton and all Democrats for that matter. So yes, I think because Harvey Weinstein is such a big donor, conservatives should be demanding that Democrats return this disgusting money back. I mean, who, who wants that? Who wants to be associated with that? But I also think we need to be careful and really ask ourselves, um, what is the best way to respond to these types of, of scandals? Because they actually sadly happen on both sides. Of course, they're all very different, but we did, we did see um, some some similar allegations out of Fox News. What are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I definitely agree with you. I, I I mean, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, how it's frustrating to see scandals like this get politicized by either side of them, right? Because obviously, I mean, it does have a twinge of a political element to it because of the campaign donations. But in general, sexual abuse, sexual assault, sexual harassment, I mean, this isn't a political issue, right? Everyone should be condemning it immediately. Um, and I think it's fine to criticize people who receive money from him for not condemning this sooner. I think it's ridiculous that Hillary Clinton and the Obamas waited, you know, a week to condemn him. Um, but now that they have done so, I don't really see the point in continuing to beat them over the head over it, which is, I think, what a lot of people are doing right now. And I've also been a little bit frustrated at some people acting or implying that the Obamas knew about it when they were so friendly to him. I think that that uh, accusation really just doesn't bear out, considering the fact that you know they allowed their old, eldest daughter to intern for him. I think if they knew any of this at all, I mean, no one would send their daughter to go work for that creep, right? So I think some of the allegations have been a little bit over the top, but I think it's fine to say, look, this guy donated and gave you money. Um, and now, as it turns out, all of these women said that he did all of these horrible, gross, awful, disgusting things and exploited them. I think it's fine to expect those individuals to condemn his actions. So one of the organizations that in addition to Hillary Clinton and the Obamas, waited five days to speak out about right. this was the National Organization of Women, which actually provides an interesting segue into our next topic we wanted to take on uh, this week, which is the Boy Scouts of America deciding to admit girls into the Cub Scouts program starting next year, and also their decision to establish a brand new program for older girls using the same curriculum as Boy Scouts. So this, this change happened upon the urging of the National Organization of Women, which waited five days. So this yeah. is an organization that claims to represent women they yeah, are you very feminist to condemn a creep and then you're like oh actually you know boy scouts can you change all of your agenda <laughs> so that way we can bankrupt the girl scouts exactly like, great great job <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so i thought this was really hypocritical i actually wrote a piece for it over at the federalist i'd encourage you to go check that out and my argument was really how this this seems to be coming a trend where in the name of feminism and equality 
uh, women are encouraging these changes, and but at the end of the day, they're hurting other women and girls in the process. So by the Boy Scouts opening themselves up to girls, they're creating so much more competition for the Girl Scouts, which is already struggling itself. And so in a way, uh, they're only hurting themselves. Yeah, and I think there is something to be said about girls who want to go into Boy Scouts. I wanted to be in Boy Scouts also when we were I was both little. Girl Scouts we were both Girl Scouts. Record. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to be in Boy Scouts too because it seemed like the boys did funner things. And I know funner is not a word, but whatever. <laughs> they did Pinewood Derbies. They would go hiking. They would do all these sort of outdoor things, learn how to build a campfire, and we did none of that in Girl Scouts. I, obviously, I had a ton of fun and made a lot of friends um, in Girl Scouts, but I did want to do some of you know these rougher, tougher. Um, activities as well. So I think it's fine for the Girl Scouts to take a look at, you know, the curriculum and say, how can we make adjustments to accommodate girls that want to be more outdoorsy? Or maybe certain troops can just emphasize that more, you know, in the activities that they decide to do and whatnot. Um, but I think, you know, fixing things internally should have really been the response um, instead of being like, oh, now we're going to force the Boys Scouts, you know, to except girls. Instead of the Boy Scouts teaching little boys life skills, they're now teaching them life skills for political correctness. Uh, yeah, that, that's kind of um, really what where this is. this is going. And I actually think it creates a unique opportunity for the Girl Scouts to consider reforming some of its programs, adding in some of these more outdoor activity skills building programs that the Boy Scouts have and adopting them for women because the Girl Scouts membership too is suffering. Yeah, exactly. And you know, the Girl Scouts was founded by Juliet Lowe who wanted to make who wanted to make a Scouts similar to Boy Scouts, which has been around a lot longer than the Girl Scouts has. So, so that way girls could participate it and do it themselves, right? And establish relationships with other girls and develop sisterhood, which is also really important. Um, so I think it's fair to say that, you know, the curriculum has since devolved into this highly politicized kind of handbook that Planned Parenthood helps them write. Um, and they actually do lobbying for Planned Parenthood and help get signatures on petitions in order to help that organization. So, you know, I think it's come a long way in a bad direction from what it was supposed to be at one point in time. Um, and I think really that's what the problem with Girl Scouts is, is that it's so deeply political instead of a fun uh, activity teaching girls how to you know build campfires and go hiking. Well Girl Scouts if you are listening it is time to step away from the political correctness any sort of political Resist. Uh, fight. <laughs> I mean if, if the NFL is any sign it is not good for business just stay away and stick to the basics. There's, I, I still think it's a good program. It has a lot of potential, but and, and I think they have a big opportunity to really step up and uh, make themselves open to young girls and women of all perspectives. But moving on, we could talk about that all day. <laughs> up next, uh, earlier today, I interviewed Sam so Sorbo, who if you're not uh, familiar with her, she is one of the few very brave Christian conservatives out there in liberal Hollywood. On October 27th, she's releasing her next film, which she both stars in and helped to write. This was produced by Sean Hannity, and, and Sean Hannity, who also helped fund the, pro, uh, the, the film, and it is called Let There Be Light. So um, up next, we have a short clip of my interview from her on our Facebook Live on the Daily Signal from earlier this morning. You can go check out the whole clip um, there. And then we're going to roll a short trailer of the film so you can see what it's all about. The middle America, the forgotten men and women, as, as Hannity calls them, right? The hardworking men and women who still believe in uh, faith, family, and freedom, right? Uh, their voice was heard. This was an amazing thing because they, they started to realize they had a champion. We have a champion in the White House now, okay? And then what happened? Then, we'll fast forward, he did some stuff, which was great, but then he took on the NFL. Now, the NFL is pro-America. I mean, American football, that's our calling card. We're Americans and we got football and no one else really does because uh, that's different football, right? The NFL does not support America. They take money from the military to, to promote the military. God bless them. Uh, which is okay, that's American, that's capitalism. But, but you got a bunch of thugs who take a knee at the, at the national anthem. And if it, had, if it had started and stopped with Colin Kaepernick, that would have been one thing. But it didn't, it grew. And so eventually Donald Trump took them on. 
and they lost, now look, the American people see that with their champion, with this one person who's a lightning rod, and yes, he falls on different sides of different issues, but he's a lightning rod for certain things that are very American, very patriotic, very faith, family, and freedom. The American people are seeing that they, that they have a champion and they have a voice. And they have a voice and their voice counts. And now we need them to show up at the movie theaters and send a <laughs> message to Hollywood about the kind of entertainment that they want. And I'm hoping that it's my kind of entertainment because I made a movie that I want to go to the theaters to see. And so... Oh. Yeah, 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 I'm coming. You're drunk? Oh, you can't pull the wool over your eyes. The basic tenet of Christianity is... Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you dare tell me about the love and the compassion of your so-called God. What do you think it does to the boys to take the death of their brother and use it as part of your carnival act? Pays the bills. Daddy. Clinically dead in the ambulance for four minutes. It's a miracle. I saw Davy. Well, all I wanted to do was just, I wanted to put my arms around him. I, I don't know what to do with it. You've gotten the best scientific explanation. It hasn't brought you any comfort. Would you consider consulting a different source? Doc, he is your God, and he's holding out his hand to you. All you gotta do now is take it. Jesus gets whacked, right? Well, I've never exactly heard it put that way, but yeah. Follow me here, this ain't brain surgery. Do you believe that God hears? God always answers prayers. Sometimes we just don't understand the answers. This better be good. That's what I said. I don't want to lose you. So my first question is, are you guys ready for the amount of heat that'll be coming your way with this. So be sure to check out that movie when it comes out on October 27th. Right now, it's time to play Real or Fake News, the part of the show where I'm gonna read some headlines. Kelsey is gonna guess if they're real headlines or if they're fake. Uh, for all of you watching, I encourage you to play along and guess and see if you can beat Kelsey at this game. Let's see. All right, first headline. The American Heart Association is sued for discrimination against trans fats. Real or fake? <laughs> yeah. I kind of believe that this could happen, so I'm going to say real. Fake. Psych. Where'd you come but up with that idea? it's a real headline. <laughs> it's a real headline from the Babylon Bee, which is a satirical website that uh, I read all the time. It's pretty funny. You all should check it out if you don't know yeah, it don't regularly. Already. Yes. We'll change your it's life. It's sort of like the conservative side of the onion, right? Yeah. It's funnier, I think. All right. Texas State University seeks math professors who are committed to social justice. Real or fake? Why would you need math professors <laughs> committed to social justice? I hope this is fake. Wrong. Oh. It's real. It happened. You can read all about it over at The Daily Caller. Although I wish that that was fake because, or I wish it was real. It is real. I wish I was in that class because, you know, numbers don't care about your feelings and they're just kind of more objective and I was bad at math. So, so you I wish want that someone was, to care about your I feelings. I would want someone to care about my feelings and be like, you oh, want to be a victim, wrong, but you get credit because you tried. You like, want to be a victim in math I want to be a victim in math. Yeah. Because yeah. I am a victim. I'm sort of with you there. Yeah. You know, as women, we are victims. So <laughs> let's roll with it. Okay. Clemson students demand that a MAGA hat wearing student be expelled. Real or fake? MAGA, for those who don't know, make America great again. Uh, Clemson students. Hmm. Uh, that can't happen. Fake. You are right. Okay, good. I made it up. Good. That would be, like, unconstitutional. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's a private school where they have, like, mandatory uniforms, but... Yeah. Okay. Whew. Right. We haven't Governor, gone that far off the, off the rocks. Not yet. <laughs> We're about there, but not quite. All right. Governor Jerry Brown is set to open up internment camps for Californians who use the wrong pronoun. Real or fake? Internment camps? Fake. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. It's totally <laughs> fake. But the headline is real, which you can read over at the Babylon Bee, although that story is totally fake. But in California, which is the best state in the ent whole entire union, I think because a lot that's of people would from, disagree with you on that one. <laughs> uh, it's the best state in the whole entire union. Eighth largest economy in the world. Wonderful place. However, last week, uh, the state legislature actually passed a law making it illegal um, and punishable by jail time if you use the wrong pronoun. So you can actually go to jail for this? You can actually go to jail. That is the way such the law is a written. fabulous use of taxpayer dollars. I know, right? Good there's, job, California. It's not like there's other things that are going on, you know, like the drought or uh, the impending economic collapse yeah. of businesses pulling out of the state because of the debilitating tax structure that is in place there that my parents have to live under. Or, Har whatever. or Harvey Weinstein going around allegedly yeah. raping people and someone who actually deserves to be in jail. No, you're just going to go to jail if you use the wrong gender pronoun. Yeah. Goodness. All yeah. right. It's crazy town. Okay, last headline. Alec Baldwin has a drink-throwing meltdown on a New York City street and called a driver of a big SUV a meatball. I totally believe this. Doesn't Alec Baldwin have a lot of public meltdowns? He does. He does have a lot of public meltdowns, and this story is completely real. <laughs> and you can read all about it over at page six. I actually will. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So now it's time for my favorite part of the show, where we crown the problematic woman of the week. This week, Katie Pavlich spoke about Second Amendment issues at UW-Madison, and she faced some interesting protests. We're going to roll a clip, but first, we want to issue a warning that there is some content that could be inappropriate for some young viewers. I'm going I'm to say not could be, probably is inappropriate. Probably is inappropriate. Get ready for this. Yes. Get ready. Get ready. It. Let's go. I'm not. I'm What do you think about all of this madness? So the name of this protest that <laughs> they staged against Katie Pavlich, who is is so knowledgeable on the Second Amendment and, and is very polite, such a great clean woman. Yes. yes. Um, the name of this protest, I can't believe I have to say this out loud, was Cox Not Glocks. And so that's where they got their idea to use this profanity. They're waving around sex toys and, and body parts. Um, to protest a very nice young woman. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine if you're Katie walking onto campus and you have to walk past this. I mean, good job making her feel uncomfortable because yeah. I can't imagine. Um, I mean, this is literal sexual harassment, right? Like, that's literally what this is. So I think it's really ironic that so many campus protesters, you know, they always like to speak out against catcalling, uh, speaking out against sexual harassment, speaking out about all these issues, which are good, right? Like we should be speaking out against sexual harassment. But but why do all of these same protesters perpetuate sexual harassment when, you know, protesting a young woman who is speaking about an issue that they happen to disagree with? I think it's very hypocritical. Well, and Katie, being the strong woman she is, obviously just brushed this off and went with shook it, it and still, still <laughs> she shook it off. And she still gave her speech. Everything uh, went peacefully. But uh, this protest, I believe, did go against the campus's own um, sexual assault codes. Um, and so it's extremely, incredibly hypocritical, which is like really what our show is all about. There's just so many <laughs> examples of this yeah. hypocrisy among feminists and the social justice warriors. There's just no shortage. So that is why we do this every week. But um, so this is wrapping up our show. And as usual, we always like to leave you with a lighthearted video at the end. And this one I'm obsessed with. I linked to it in Bright this week, which if you don't know Bright, it's a morning email for women by women sponsored uh, by the Federalist. And uh, this shows the moment that a young girl finds out that she's going to be adopted. Before we roll the clip, we just want to thank you for tuning in to our show today, uh, Problematic Women. If you know a problematic woman who we should interview or or if you have an idea of who we should crown our problematic woman of the week, please let us know. But for now, my name is Kelsey Harkness. You can follow me on Twitter at Kelsey J Harkness. 
and I'm Bree Payton. You can follow me on Twitter at Bree underscore Payton and read all of my work over at thefederalist.com. All right, here's our clip.